Today we are in Lancaster for the third BHPC race of the season. The track is quite wet, as it has been raining before the event. This may cause trouble while cornering. Glenn Woodman here in the Nostra Streamliner is doing some practice lapses, followed by the Yellow Donkey Streamliner. Euron on his M5 low racer is going to try to beat me in the unfair and partially fair classification. There are less people than usual, so it will be easier for everybody to get championship points, assuming there is no collision or race incident. Watch your backs on track edge, please! The Bino Streamliner here is a favorite. Here is my own bike. Here is the Rat Racer, one of the fastest low racer in existence. Lewis Will Snug Velomobile is one of the favorites. Lancaster track is 1.3 km long and is reasonably smooth. It has no hairpin or sharp corner, but it can be slippery because of the wet moss on the track. On the front row, Philip Carter in orange and Rob Womack in yellow have a chance to climb in the Encycle classification. That's a dodgy wobbly start from Colin Rose on his challenger he can recommend. But at least he has started. Majestly on this challenge, Chester low racer is having trouble starting. Jonathan Woolwich on his Hocus Pocus slow racer is having trouble as well. After the first lap, Dave Minter on his tricycle is leading. Les Young is following in the second place. Judy Swallow on the ice track is in third place. She is followed by the unicycles of Philip Carter and Mel Rose. The riders have already very spread out after the first lap. Dave Minter on his tricycle is consolidating his leads ahead of Les Lyon. They are still followed by Judis Swallow on a high strike micro. The race is one hour long, so anything can happen. Malo's the first hand cycle is quite a bit behind in 7th place. Rob Romack and Philip Carter are battling for the second place in the hand cycle classification. Dave Minter is still leading the race, ahead of Les Young. Rob Gromack is attacking and taking the second place in the Encycles classification. Fiona Groove on her low racer has taken the second place ahead of Judith Swallow. Mal Rose on his Encycle is following and seems to be gaining ground on the leaders. Malrose on his down cycle is now in third place, followed by Judas Swallow. Dave Minter on his tricycle is still leading the race. He's followed by the encycle of Marrose and the low racer of Fiona Groove. John Mission on his spell so probably is watching for people walking their dogs. People have been known to let their dog go on the track. That's quite dangerous.
Malwoz and Fiona Bulldog have overtaken Dave Minter. And they are now leading. Malwoz on his own cycle is now leading the race. This is now the last lap, and Malwoz looks like he is going to win. Malwoz on his own cycle has won the race. Now is the time for the fast race. I am having a good start. I'm leading the race ahead of Lee Wexfields in his snug Velomobile. Liam Goodman in the North Sioux Streamliner is in third place. I am probably keeping the advantage because of the turns. It looks like the Velomobile will be difficult to beat. Lee Wexfield is overtaking me with ease, even though I'm riding reasonably fast at around 46-48 km per hour. The Nosso Swimliner is overtaking me easily as well. Somehow I'm already lapping James Abel White in his Miller and Self Velomobile. Maybe there is something wrong. Finally Slash in the Bino Streamliner is overtaking me, as you would expect. Russell's Bridge, the 77 Streamliner is overtaking me. He's followed by the Yellow Donkey Streamliner. I seem to be getting slower and slower. That's it! You ran on his M5, Low Racer is catching up with me. I'm certainly not going to let him drop me. We are lapping the Milan SL and the Vulcan Velmobiles. I am launching an attack. The snug Velomobile is already lapping me after slightly more than 10 kilometers. Overtaking in a turn is not ideal for him as I am matching his speed, and it feels scary. The 
and also Swimliner is lapping me as well. Finally, Euron is catching up with me again. Yes, creating a small gap. But there is nothing to worry about for me, as the back marker, the Milan SL, is slowing him down. Slash is lapping us. Again, he's still only in third place. Euron is getting away again. I'm catching up with Euron. And the Snug Velomobile is lapping us for a second time. He's still followed by the Not So Streamliner. Slash is lapping us for the second time as well. I have dropped my rear camera. Now Barney is filming. Looks like there has been some kind of incident in the turn, as it looks like Slash has crashed off track. Slash seems to be fine on his restarting. He will lose the first place. But he is still ahead of us as he is so much faster. Wexfield in the snug Velomobile is lapping us again, and he is consolidating the first place. Slash is in third place, and also Streamliner is in second place. My front camera has run out of battery. I am still following your run. The difference in speed between unfair bikes and Streamliners or Velomobiles is too big today. In the end, I launched an attack four laps before the end, and I got the maximum points for the unfair and partially fair category. The Snook Velomobile won the race. He is followed by the Noso Streamliner and Slash. I am only in sixth place overall, as the Velomobiles and Streamliners were impossible to beat. Now is the time for the second slow race. Barney is riding a home-built low racer. It is a front-wheel drive recumbent. Did you wait for them to come round again? Boy, you didn't get that, David, did you? No. He is smiling. It could be a very fast bike if it was rideable. The handling is not very good, but it still deserves to be the bike of the day. After the first lap, Malwazen in our cycle is ahead of Death Minster on his tricycle. Judith Swallow on her high strike Micro is not far behind. They are followed by Fiona Groove and Jonathan Woolwish. One thing is sure. Most people are going to get more championships points, as there are not as many people as usual. It may make a difference in the final trophies. It does look like the winner will be one of those three riders.
Barney is still trying to ride his homemade Le Racer. It is not clear why this bike is so hard to ride. It is a forward wheel drive. So pedaling interferes with the steering. Malrose on his own cycle is still leading. This is the last lap. Malo's on the cycle is still leading. Ahead of 10 meters until the swallow. Swallow has won the race, ahead of Malro, Dave Minter is third. Now is the time for the last race of the day, 20 minutes plus one lap. Yet again, I'm having a good start. I'm taking the lead. Finally, Lee Wakefield in the Snug Fellowmobile is overtaking me. He's followed by Slash in the Bino Streamliner. Johan on his M5 Low Racer is catching up with me. He's followed by Derek Twido in the Yellow Monkey Streamliner. The Noto Streamliner is overtaking us, but he is quite late compared with the other three ahead. Like in the previous race, we are lapping James Ebel White in his Milan SL Velomobile. Something has to be wrong with the Noto Streamliner as we are overtaking it back. Snug Velomobile is lapping us again. The race is very similar to the previous one. I'm launching an attack. But the attack has failed. Russell's Bridge Streamliner is overtaking me as I am slowing down. The run is accelerating as the race is close to the end. The time has come to launch the final attack. I'm overtaking Russell Bridge inadvertently, as I thought he was one lap ahead. That's mission accomplished. I'm taking the unfair and partially fair championship points. Slash won that race ahead of Lee Snogs Velomobile. Derek Tudor's Streamliner is third ahead of me. 